When you think of the highest earning companies in the world, what do you think of? I'd assume most people think of Amazon first, Apple or Google, Walmart, I don't know. Just a little further down that line is Deere and Company, also known as John Deere. Now, as someone who's lived in the Midwest, there's a lot of things that are staples of the Midwest, the heartland as we call it. No one calls it that here at all. Walking tacos, farmersonly.com maybe, going to hy V, and then you accidentally bump into someone in the aisle and they go, oh, sorry about that. And one of those things is John Deere. My association with John Deere is mostly trying to drive 35 minutes to get anywhere and there's a tractor in the road. They sit at number 84 on the Fortune 500, just below Nike, and it's worth more than most in the modern world. With 44 billion in sales in 2021, Deere makes most of their money off of farming, lawn care, and construction equipment. But let me tell you, that profit doesn't just come from where you'd expect. This company makes some of the most confusing products I have ever seen. Are you traveling out of the country soon? Well, let me tell you, I think you need yourself a John Deere passport case. Or maybe you're saving up for something big, you know, saving up for like, you know, a new car, uh, walking taco ingredients. <laughs> Don't worry, John Deere's got a piggy bank. If the piggy bank isn't really your style, I mean, not everyone likes the generic piggy bank style, you know, maybe you're more into like a green boot bank. Want to listen to some of your favorite songs from Florida Georgia Line? Grab the John Deere Bluetooth speaker with Amazon Alexa. Ugh, why does that exist? Or if you want to keep it to yourself because you're ashamed of the music you listen to, don't worry, they have wireless earbuds. The only problem is they aren't called John Pods, and I can't believe they just passed that up. Can you imagine someone walking up to you like, dang, you got some nice earbuds, dude, what are those? Oh, they're John Pods. There's a John Deere wireless mouse. I have nothing to say about this. It's just really weird that this exists. Is your dining table looking a little drab? Not much going on on there. There's not one, not two, but three different salt and pepper shakers. And my personal favorite is Johnny Pop Kettle Corn. <laughs> it either comes in a pack of 36 or you can just buy one. You can buy one single bag of popcorn on the John Deere website. They really have it down to an art, honestly. It's truly beautiful what they've made, these products that are exclusively for old couples in rural Indiana. You know, the kind of people who are retired and their names are something like Glenda and Richard. So I've decided to enter in a competition with John Deere. I've got a team of a dozen idea makers and innovators who I'm totally not holding hostage. We're developing many highly desirable products that innovate and inspire. A Christmas ornament, a pillow, toilet paper, a quesadilla maker, and a Blu-ray copy of Stuart Little 2. Movie's exactly the same, I'm just on the cover. There's nothing different. And even more coming down the line. You better look out, Johnny, because we're looking to go public soon, buddy. And let me tell you, number 84 is looking as snug as a bug in a rug. My work against John Deere has only just begun. Let's be honest, it's, it's a long trek, but we're getting it. And the one area where I'm sorely behind is licensed video games. I actually don't have any of those. No one wants to make that. I don't know why. Actually, I don't know what they'd make. It'd be really boring. John Deere has appeared in many video game series, primary example being Farming Simulator in more recent times, which by the way, did you know there's Farming Simulator eSports? Got a little sidetracked there. Farming Simulator isn't actually the focus of this video because John Deere actually has their own licensed games with John Deere in the title. Most of them were released in the 2000s for PC and oh boy, are they something special. Before I delve into the first game, I wanna read you a quote from founder John Deere himself. I will never put my name on a product that does not have in it the best that is in me. Just keep that one in the back of your mind while we go through these games. John Deere American Farmer Deluxe. This isn't just any American farmer. This is a deluxe American farmer. So they have like a Sam's Club membership, I guess. This is an isometric sim game released in 2006, which came bundled with another game that I'm gonna cover after this one. There's a set of missions to complete and there's also a free play mode, but I only did one mission. I tried another one and got bored really fast. So you, can you blame me? The first mission introduced us to our main characters, Hank and his wife, Janet. And later there was this guy, I think his name was Norman, and he looked like he'd been through some dark times before this. Uh, I think he definitely worked the night shift at Denny's. He was looking rough. Norman is not very smart, but he will work overtime for a glass of chocolate milk. I love treating my workers terribly, but I do give them chocolate milk. 
I began my deluxe American farming experience by plowing my fields as you'd expect. And it was quite the beautiful process really. Like clockwork, Hank was on the job. It was almost hypnotizing in a way how beautiful of a process it was. His wife Janet was left to pick up anything around the farm that he wasn't doing while he was plowing the fields. So there was the garden and a couple other things that they could sell to make some quick bucks. And this would actually become a problem very soon. Before I get any further, it's worth mentioning that this game controls pretty standard to what you'd expect, but just a little weird. You know how some games don't even really feel like you're playing a game? Like, I know I'm playing it, but this feels more like I'm using the Microsoft Office suite. I just feel like this is more comparable to an Excel sheet than it is, like, a game. So I planted all my corn, and everything was ready, and I was waiting for it to grow. While all this happened, Hank stood in place for months. And this is where some problems arise. This guy doesn't need food or water or hobbies or anything. He just stood there. His entire existence was to use this John Deere equipment to plant corn and then do nothing else. Can you tell I'm enjoying myself out here? It's a good day to not do anything and just stand completely still in the middle of a field. This is how you make money. Just standing here, watching the cash roll in. God, I love standing in this field. What made things more odd is for some reason, everyone in this game just sweats profusely. I mean, this guy was like a sprinkler. Like he was not all right. He was wiping his brow all the time. While I was mesmerized by the immense levels of sweat produced by a single man, the first disaster struck. In one of the fields, it was getting infested with bugs and weeds. Any farmer knows this disaster. My field was on the verge of being taken over by the forces of nature, and Hank was having none of that. There was only one solution, call in the planes and clear all that nasty stuff out of the field. I might have messed this up though. <laughs> um, I may have chosen a product that says in big red text that it kills all crops. I somehow didn't see this, I, I guess, and did it anyway. <laughs> Effectiveness, 100%. Get rid of that shit. It's dead? Why did it die? I'm gonna lose my all my corn. I didn't know this at the time though, so out of fear and desperation, I made Hank harvest both of the fields. I was afraid I waited too long and one of them died. And the other one wasn't dead yet, so I was like, okay, I gotta move, I gotta get going. So I got Hank harvest in the fields and in total, I collected zero corn. Not a single corn cob was salvageable in this scenario. I did find a fossil that sold for nearly $5,000 seconds after all this happened, which felt almost symbolic of the state of my farm at this point. You found prehistoric lizard fossils on your property. Paleontologists flock to the site and pay you $5,000. Worst came to worst right after that, Janet left Hank to be a country singer. Well, let's do that. Let's see. Janet says she can't spend another day on this rotten farm. She is moving to Nashville to pursue a career in country music. It looks like you'll have to get by without her. Oh no! Hank was absolutely destroyed by this news. He never recovered from this sudden and drastic change in his life. But I didn't give up so easily, so I decided to go back in time, also known as just loading an earlier save. My second attempt at this mission went by with ease. I sprayed all the crops, got them all planted and stuff, everything was looking good and healthy. And I didn't kill them with, with chemicals. I think Hank needs a little bit of an upgrade. Good idea. <laughs> good idea. Yeah, let's go. Hank's doing damn donuts. While the corn was in an immaculate state of perfection, Hank's relationship was the complete opposite. I decided to put Janet up to the task of making some cash by selling everything in the greenhouse. I don't know what was growing in there, um, but it was making a lot of money. That's all I'm gonna say. Janet could not do this fast enough. Like from the outside, it's just a normal greenhouse. But as soon as you go in, it's like fighting Gwendolyn in Dark Souls 1. Her satisfaction level hit the lowest of lows until finally she finished selling everything. I then tried to frantically give her fun things to do. I took her fishing, that didn't work. I bought her a trampoline and a basketball hoop and she went absolutely hog wild on that trampoline.
Oh, her satisfaction went up like a crumb. But her satisfaction remained the same. Fishing, trampoline, shooting hoops, nothing could cheer her up. But you want to know what made her happy in the end? Nothing. Doing absolutely nothing, standing in the rain for months just like Hank does, is the only way to increase character satisfaction. They have all these leisure activities, but they don't affect how happy they are, which makes no sense. Why would you put a trampoline in a game that doesn't make the characters happy when they use it? I then finally harvested my corn, ending this mission and my time with this game. Oh, I did it! Yeah, baby! John Deere American Farmer Deluxe is not the worst game I've ever played, but it's definitely not the best. And that's exactly what I expected going into this. I enjoyed the unraveling plot of Hank and Janet. The voice lines were pretty funny. I enjoyed those a lot. I ended up quoting them like a million times while playing the game. And the music is miserable. After about five minutes, you've heard everything that it has to offer and it just loops so fast. I'd give it a five out of 10, but I thought it'd be nice to get some Amazon reviews in here to get a couple other perspectives on this game. The first one comes from Terry L. White. He gave it three out of five stars and he said, thank you, John Deere. We had considered buying a farm. We know better now. Thank you, John Deere, for helping us avoid what would have been one of the worst mistakes in our life. If you're considering getting into agriculture, you really should play this simulation first. 2004. Wow, that's a while ago. The next one is from Hurston S. It's from this year in August, and he gave it one star and said, graphics bad, would not load complete. There was a lot of deep storytelling in American Farmer Deluxe, so I had a lot of high hopes for American Builder Deluxe, the sister game of it. Can we just take a moment to look at this beautiful box art, by the way? This sort of transparent giant man face over construction equipment. It's kind of like that Kieran J. Callanan music video, you know, the one that with the cowboys in the sky and they're like yelling. I wish I sat here today saying that this game had iconic characters like Hank, Janet, and Norman in it, but sadly that's just not the case, and this whole game is actually like super boring and really buggy. My first objective was to build two buildings, a swimming pool, and a fence gate parking lot thing. My first troubles came when I had to get a guy to go in a vehicle. I'm not proud to say this, but this took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to get a man to sit in a vehicle. I then tried to make him flatten some land with this construction vehicle, and he started just driving to the corner of the map when I'd press a button. And as soon as he'd reach the corner of the map, it would crash the game. My game crashed. Overall, in the hour I played this, it crashed three times. And the game's tutorials are these hint pop-ups that only happens sometimes and you can't bring them back up in like a help menu. So I pretty much had no idea what I was doing the entire time I played this. I finally figured out that to flatten an area you have to click and drag on the ground to select like a grid of where you want to flatten. Once the land was prepped I began construction on the two buildings first. This took absolutely ages to build and it had little to no animation of like it being built which I feel like is a really important part of construction is like being able to see how it gets put together is really cool, you know? Like a building is a really complex thing and there's a lot that makes it structurally sound. But in this game, the guys just stand at the bottom of the building and hit it. Another weird thing is the buildings for some reason must have had too much detail for this game to load in at the same time because every time I would get close, like zoom in on the buildings, it would just have the frame rate. I mean, the game would just chug. Somehow I completed this mission under the time limit and under the budget by like a million dollars. I don't know how I did that. Apparently I should be running a construction company instead of doing whatever the hell this is. I wish I had more nice things to say about this game, but American Builder Deluxe was by far the worst game I played. This is something you find in that aisle in Target where they have all those PC games on CD. You know the one that's like in the corner of the store because no one looks at it. It would be on the shelf next to like crazy machines and a bootleg of mist. One out of 10 for me. Uh, let's see what Amazon has to say. Charles McLaren gives it five stars and says, good game. Why even review something? Carol B says, great deal, gives it five stars and says, I bought this game for $6 and it was the best thing I had bought ever. Do not listen to the other reviews. I do not know what you are talking about. <laughs> John Deere Harvest in the Heartland is the only non-PC offering I have to show you today. This was actually for the Nintendo DS. Harvest in the Heartland is a Midwestern American themed Harvest Moon bootleg. It also has the scariest characters possible on the box art. 
why do they look like that? I was pretty hopeful for this one. I think it had a lot more potential to be more of a traditional game experience instead of these half-baked sim games that either crash or you have the option to buy a Paul Bunyan statue. I mean, it can only really go uphill from there, right? Now, if you haven't played Harvest Moon, welcome to the club. I haven't played one, but it is kind of like Stardew Valley, which I think most people have tried at this point. The first thing that came to mind and it never really went away is just the walking animation and how weird it is. I couldn't really pinpoint it at first, but it's definitely just how the legs move. They look sort of loose and noodly. This guy looks like he's walking in Tom and Jerry. I didn't really know what to do at first because this game kind of just throws you in. So I just wandered around the town hoping I'd find something that would tell me what I'm supposed to do. And I found a mini game arcade thing, I guess. There were four options to choose from. Egg catching, pig wrangling, sheep shearing, and a Simon Says milking mini game. Every time I make one of these videos, there's one sentence that really just sticks out to me as something I never want to say again in my life. And Simon Says Milking Minigame has to be on that list for sure. Continuing off the box art, some of the shopkeeps are also pretty uncomfortable looking, especially this Ron Swanson looking guy. He kind of haunts my nightmares now, hasn't gone away about three nights in a row. Farming in this game is absurdly tedious. It is the reason I quit the game. To use tools, you have to swipe the DS stylus in the correct direction that would match the way you use a tool. So if you had a seed bag, you'd swipe forward from your character to like throw the seed on the ground. With the watering can, you swipe to the side to water from left to right. It's a cool idea, but half of the time when you do it, it doesn't register it because it's very particular on how you do it. This coupled with the fact that you do things in the direction your character is facing, it makes it super frustrating to just efficiently water a field. If this doesn't sound slow enough for you, the inventory has a loading screen when you close it, and it is so long. It is such a long loading screen. I don't know how they did this on a DS game, but it's like baffling. Now these wheat fields would take about three in-game days to grow. And since I had already exhausted the mini games, I genuinely did not know what to do. There's no one to talk to other than the shopkeeps, and they only say the same things that you'd expect because it's a shopkeep. You walk up to them, they say, Hey, what are you buying? And that's it. So I just walked around a little bit, realized there was nothing to do, and then slept for three days straight until my wheat was done. Later, you get access to actual machinery like tractors and stuff, but it's so expensive that it just seems so frustrating to get to that point. It would take me hours, and in the end, it would just make the main part of the game faster and leave me with more time to just sit there and wait. If I was a kid with a DS and I wanted a farming game, it isn't the worst thing ever, I, I guess. I'd give it a 4 out of 10. Let's check out the Amazon reviews and see what they say. Kindle customer says, games. <laughs> Sorry. Kindle customer says, games, and gives it 5 stars and says, it's great game and like, one, two, three, four, five. I'd say like maybe like 25 exclamation points. Sladag says, this game is both educational and fun. Two of our grandchildren had shared one before a birthday came along, and now each one has a copy and both are thrilled. It arrived as promised, and since it's a 2007 game, it was not readily available, but one again, Amazon comes through. They gave it one star. John Deere Drive Green. They must have ran out of ideas for titles for games. They should have named it John Deere. Please buy a tractor. I'm begging you. We need money. This is the game I spent the most time with. It's a similar experience to American Farmer Deluxe, but from a third and first person perspective. You start with a home farm that you can harvest and plant at, but there's literally no reason to do so. The main thing to do is this job board. You're given 15 jobs to do, and all of them are the most mind-numbing things you could possibly do. You drive a big machine over some stuff, and then the big machine does the thing to the stuff that it should, and then you go back to your farm and you do the next one. You might be wondering to yourself, okay, why did you play this game for so long then if it's so boring? The answer is because of um, fossils. Each of the jobs has one fossil to collect in it. And then you go back to your farm and you can see the progress of the creature you're creating in your barn. I don't know how these fossils are all conveniently scattered across many different areas and also somehow in a golf course. I don't know how they wouldn't find that making the golf course. 
Also, why does John Deere have this weird obsession with fossils? Is there some sort of farmer fossil story that really sent this off? I never have heard of this in my life. So I wanted to finish making this creature by finding all the fossils. And this is where the descent into madness came into play. I got all the fossils in the 15 jobs after playing ages of this game. I'm being serious. I think I played four hours of this game and got 15 fossils. I was completely baffled when I found out there are 31 of them. Hours went by of me scavenging, slowly crafting my masterpiece in my barn at home, and then I hit a wall. 29 of 31 found. I went through all the 15 missions again, I couldn't find them anymore. I looked around the farm to see if there was any more and I just couldn't find them. So then I went to Google, I was like, hey, where do I find these fossils? One of them I literally can't find, and then the other one just genuinely does not spawn in the game. You have to go in the game files and make the fossil spawn. And this discovery destroyed me. Uh, I quit the game there and never played it again. All jokes aside, the process of farming is more entertaining when you're in a third first person perspective. I mean, when you're the one controlling all the machines like an actual person, it's a lot more fun, you know? It just feels like you're more part of the experience. That being said, it is really boring. And one thing that really like genuinely upset me is I found out you could change the game speed right when I was about to quit. I clicked on the help screen for the keybinds and it shows you that you can just double the game speed. And I didn't know this the whole time I was playing. So I played this game for like five or six hours and I probably could have have that time if I knew this keybind existed. I give this game a one out of 10 because the chickens are funny and that's it. That's the only good part of the game. Oh my god, they, they didn't even animate it, he just like... <laughs> Brian Suttard says, Drive Green sucks and gives it 1 out of 5 stars. Drive Green is a very difficult game to play and isn't realistic. Would be very difficult for age group it says. I wouldn't call this game difficult in the typical sense of a video game, but if we're talking like the mental struggle of playing it, yeah, it's definitely one of the hardest games I've ever played. David H says, not great for playability and gives it three out of five stars. Okay for when the game was made, just not much equipment for one or two. You already have all the properties. Really, the only fun part left is finding the fossils. Oh, David, if only you knew. And with that, that's all of the John Deere games that I played. It was bad, mostly. I didn't like John Deere before this for a variety of reasons that I'll put on the screen right now, but I don't really like them anymore, and if I ever do get my hands on a game development team to make me a licensed game, I'm not feeling very scared for making something better. Thank you for watching a whole video about this, of all things. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Go buy yourself a little salt and pepper shaker set.